In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So dear friends, as we celebrate this first Saturday in honor of the Immaculate Heart of Our Lady, as we have this healing mass with the anointing of the sick, I mentioned last month that I was going to start to highlight other groups that sometimes we don't pay attention to. It's easy and understandable for us during a healing mass to be attentive to those who are physically ill, those who are fighting cancer or heart disease or all the things that are more of the body. And sometimes we can neglect, not intending to, those among us who are suffering in other ways. Last month I spoke about those who are grieving and the importance it is to our spiritual health and our emotional health to allow ourselves to grieve. Today I want to speak a little bit about those who are in addiction. Sometimes we can forget them. Sometimes we kind of throw them to the peripheries. Addiction can be many things. Alcohol, drugs, prescription drugs. It could be pornography. Anything that robs us of our freedom, and we start to convince ourselves that we need this other thing in order to be ourselves. Oftentimes those who are fighting addictions, they can't openly speak about it. Who wants to just announce in front of the whole congregation, hey, by the way, I'm struggling with narcotics, right? Or, hey, uh, by the way, I started taking this pain medicine and it's really gotten the best of me and I'm starting to abuse it, right? So oftentimes those who are in addictions, there's a certain shame or darkness that naturally covers them. We need to stop that. We need to make sure during our healing mass that those who have addictions know that they can come and they're in the light of Jesus Christ. And if they're fighting their addiction, there's no shame. Shame is when we find ourselves slaves. When we're trying to break the fetters and receive that freedom in Jesus Christ, there is no shame in Jesus Christ. So we have to highlight those among us who are suffering from addictions. Oftentimes they themselves suffer from great self-hatred. Addiction itself is one way in which they're trying to give themselves some self-medication. They're trying to deal with a greater spiritual suffering. The self-hatred, perhaps there's problems in their narrative, in their own personal narrative, their childhood. Perhaps it's some relationship that has failed them. I think it's interesting that if you get to know those who suffer from addiction and choose to accompany them, oftentimes you'll be shocked at the things that they've undergone. And you could say to yourself in humility, my goodness, if I had to go through that, I'd probably be drinking too, right? Or I'd be taking some drugs too, right? The things that people are allowed to suffer in a fallen world can be shocking. The death of a child, the loss of a marriage, the betrayal of a parent, the suffering of the addiction of a parent, and dear friends, the list go on, and for some, it's all the above. And people turn to addictions because they're trying to just make it. It has become some type of misplaced self, uh, me self-defense mechanism because they're just trying to survive. Our task as a Christian community is to provide an environment where the person can confess their sins, find the grace of perseverance, receive the support of a community, and know that freedom is possible that we do not surrender our desire to anyone other than Jesus Christ. And that battle is a true battle. We can all understand that. For while we might not have addictions, we can understand the battle of sin, <laughs> to show patience when people are being impatient, to show kindness, how we have to die to ourselves. We can understand that. And so we can have that sympathy, that understanding, that empathy, and that compassion to those who have addictions. So oftentimes those who come, they come to church, in order to find that grace, to have one more day of sobriety, one more day of freedom. And our great privilege as a Christian community is to announce the good news that in Jesus Christ, that freedom is possible, that grace has power, it's real, and it can grant the strength that's needed for any soul to fight any sin or any addiction. So for those among us who are suffering from addictions, there is no place for shame. It's time to remove the darkness and replace it with the light of Christ. And to understand that you are in a community of sinners who mutually understand what it means to try to fight the good fight in order that grace might be victorious. So as we highlight the different groups among us who might be suffering, this month we especially focus on those with addictions. And we assure them of our love as we all mutually seek the love of God and to reciprocate that love as best we can. So we pray for you who might have addictions this month. <laughs> 